Hello, welcome back. It is uh, week three. It's crazy, I know I'm gonna lose track of these weeks in no time, but right now it is week three, another full week that we have going on. For those of you that are new here, my name is Kristen Langford, and I am a pre-K teacher in Florida, and this is another weekly vlog, keeping you up to date on all the things that we are doing in our class. I did wanna start out by <laughs> addressing a couple things about like our playground and outside time. I know a lot of people are like, oh, can you try some brain breaks and all these great songs, and thank you, because if I didn't know that, I would really appreciate that, but whoa, we have been trying that. It's just that, it doesn't really keep their attention that long, you know, like little ones here and there and then filling the time with other stuff. It's just, they need to run. So we are getting outside. We have our little area and we've done some bubbles and hula hoops and things like that. And it's been helping so much. So I'm past that. I think the playground will be here in like September. So that'll be like week 10 or something. I don't know. And we'll get there and it'll be great and we'll survive until then. Moving right along into the academic side of it and the, the strategies and like all of that that we're really going over this week. We in social emotional are focusing all on how to be a good listener. And in my past videos, if you guys have been watching for a while, our county uses second step, which is an amazing curriculum. I really, really love it. However, we don't have that curriculum yet, so I do have online access. I haven't really dabbled into that yet, but I'm just using resources that I have to go over how to be a good listener. So a lot of our class agreements are kind of the same thing of being a good listener, and we have these cards, I'm gonna grab in a minute, that we've been using to really give a visual of the steps of being a good listener. The second steps curriculum actually has cards too, so I just like, I'm using a different set of them that's on Teachers Pay Teachers. I think they were free too, so I can add that link down below for you guys. I'm doing like little, during the brain break, after our circle time when we do all the things of, you know, calendar and the social emotional time, it's kind of like a lot. So at the end, the brain break is part of listening. So on Monday for our like brain break, we did freeze dance. Um, just like a little video, so still a brain break, but I also talked to them about, oh, to play freeze dance, you really have to listen because you have to know when to freeze, and if you're not listening or watching, you might miss it, and then you'll keep dancing when everybody else is frozen. So it kind of like tied that in there, and then today for our brain break, we did the stop and go song, and it was just like red means stop, green means go and same thing it's freeze dance basically and then on Wednesday we're going to do Simon Says it's a video but we might actually play it too you know just for fun even when we go outside just those are great brain breaks that also target that skill of listening very important and for the cards the visuals that I was telling about they're from my fabulous class and so we just did two visuals a day so on Monday we went over ears are listening and talking about how we can't hear anything if we're not actually using our ears to listen. And then eyes are looking. This one was really fun. I kind of like walked around the classroom and I had, oh, you gotta keep tracking me with my eyes. That'll help you be a good listener if you're watching where my voice is coming from. So that was yesterday. Then today we talked about this one because our friends, keeping their hands to themselves. They're, they're not being mean, like they're not hitting and all that, but they're like poking their friend or touching their shoe or, you know, trying to have fun instead of listening. So we talked about how our hands have to be in our lap, safe so that we're not distracting our friends or ourselves. And then mouth is quiet. Obviously you can't be talking when someone else is talking. Still learning this one in life in general, you'll like ask a question and so-and-so is giving a whole story and it like, Reminds the other kid of this and then they start talking and you know, lots of teachable moments with listening. And then tomorrow we'll go over that our body is still so that we can focus, we're not being all wiggly. And then our brain is thinking. So not only are we listening to what they're saying, but you have to actually think about what they're saying inside your brain. A little tricky, but still. Thursday we're gonna do, uh, it's a video on YouTube, like guess that sound, so it'll make a sound and they have to guess what it is. And then on Friday, the same thing, it'll be guess that sound, but an animal sound. So just really focusing on what it means to be a good listener. Those videos are good because they get super excited. Oh, I got it right. And then they'll miss the next sound because they're not listening. So lots of good teachable moments. 
Um, I need to go though because lunch is already over. I ate first this time and I'll get back on here. I don't know if I'll be able to get back on after school, but maybe on Wednesday to talk you through some of the other parts of our day. See you soon. Hello, it is Thursday. It's been a little tricky finding time to get on here and record with like lunch not really being a full break all the time, being able to help with the kids in the lunchroom and then not having the playground, like I said. So we gotta all go out all hands on deck when we go play outside. So nonetheless, doing the best I can. I did wanna get back on here. I know I have already showed you guys the social emotional things that we have been doing, but I'm gonna show you what we did this week for a small group. And then if I have time, I'll move on about some shared reading and science and art and what else did we do? Play-Doh, sensory, all the things. So let me start with small groups. Okay, so I have everything set up back here. I have my social center slides so up. But the tricky part is, I think we already started cleaning up some things, so I might have to get up and go get it. But I did switch to those literacy centers like two rotations a day. So on Monday, Tuesday, I have four centers planned out. And then on Wednesday, Thursday, I have four centers planned out. So it's like two activities for me that I need to plan a week, two activities for our alphabet center, two activities for our writing center, and then two activities for our computer reading center, okay? So I'm gonna do what I have here for math first, and then when we get to literacy, I'll explain that slowly. So for math, it's only four activities, four centers, one center a day. So for my center for math, we just used the pop cubes, you know? These are brand new, super shiny, so that's always fun. Not dirty and like not mix match. I feel like at my other school I had ones that had like the hole in it and whatever. Anyways, very new. And I gave each kid like a group of the same color and we talked about making the stairs. So I said, you know, you're gonna make a tower of one and then you can make a tower of two and then a tower of three and then they like kept going to five. And it, it was basically play. However, the conversations that were around the play is what gave us the academics. So, you know, they would make, maybe they would make two stacks and they'd be like, oh, I did my stack of four and they were actually both three. And I would say, hmm, well, if this is three, how can this be four when they look the same? What do we need to do? Let's count them, you know, and just, all that conversation around it and it was very easy to differentiate so some of my kids that you know my my little ones my little three-year-olds of this instead just one-to-one -one with their fingers and we talked about putting it on and off on and then i counted them and i said off one two three four five and they loved it and actually kept their attention for probably the longest activity they've done so anyways that's like that level then we went to the one to five with most of them the other the top two ones you know we built all the way to ten and the conversations obviously guided around that I said okay well this is a group of ten if I break it here that means that this many plus this many so very easy, but it elaborated a lot more and it was very successful, I love that. All right, that was at my table. For Miss Whitney's table, even though she's not really processed yet, so she wasn't really here every day for it, so some of them had to do it on their own, they did the number two worksheet. We did number one last week. In, like, in class, we're really focusing on the number three this whole week, even though they know more than that, so, you know, we. We learn all the numbers, but focus-wise, it's supposed to be three, but we didn't do number two yet, so next week it's gonna be at the center. It'll be a review for number three, even though we're working on number four. And all of this stuff is kind of from my district as well as like what the students need. My district says focus on three, but I know that my students are, some of them are past that, so of course I'm gonna push them. I'm not just gonna focus only on that number. So when they're with me, that's why I do those conversations and go higher. So anyways, that's what they did for the writing worksheet center, basically. And next week, they're just gonna do that same thing, but number three, and then keep going until we need to stop. For Miss Sam's group, she did this game, and it's just numbers one to five. So they have headings here, one to five. And then it had a bunch of pictures that went with it. 
and the kids just had to count the number of pictures and put it under the correct number. So also differentiated, you know, some of the kids just focused on a couple numbers. Some of the kids were able to do it independently. Some of the kids really went one at a time. Let's all count this one together. What number should that be? But just a fun little game. Obviously, it's with the teachers, so that helps keep it pretty structured, but in the end, the small groups are most important for me to be able to get my instruction in, and it's a bonus that Miss Sam and Miss Whitney, when she's here, can also get some academics in. And then the last one is computer, which keeps our attention. We did try to do a playlist of like number songs on YouTube, and it went pretty well to keep it more like number focused. I don't know. We're the computer and the apps and all that still working through. Okay. I have like three minutes. I'm gonna have to probably do a little bit of this and maybe get some at the end of the day. But for literacy, first round, I'm gonna get my lesson plans because I don't wanna get it wrong. I keep my lesson plans just like on a magnet over there. So I remember, see, now I remember. We did a cutting activity in my group and I just taped construction paper like down on the table. Of course, I don't have an example. <laughs> I gotta get better at keeping examples for you guys. And I just did lines, like straight lines, swirly lines, zigzag lines, and I took data on like how they could hold the scissors and they had to sit on the ground and cut up. We talked about our elbow. And then for Miss Sam's, she did a letter building binder with these toys. I literally have nothing, it's all put away. I'll show you in a minute. Um, and then for the writing center, I think for writing on the first rotation, I'm gonna do like a fine motor activity. So like Play-Doh or tweezers or something like that to build their muscles. So they did Play-Doh letters. And then we did computers, Starfall. Then the second rotation, so that was the first two days. The next two days in my group, we did letter sorting. And they did this last week in small group with just like matching the uppercase letters. But I did sorting of straight line letters curve letters or letters that have straight and curve. I also did letters in your name and not in your name. So some of the other activities in here and we just, you know, got a lot of a lot of data from does this person know what letters are in their name? Do they know what letter this is? What sound it makes? All that kind of stuff. And then for Miss Sam's table, so they did the letter building binder, I'm going to show you. And then this time they did letters around the room and super easy. Sticky notes, wrote that uppercase and lowercase and she stuck them all around the room and then she would tell a kid go find letter W. And they already like knew, if they knew what W was, they could go find it. If they needed a visual, she would show them what the W looks like and they would go find it and take the sticky note off and give it to her. Some of the groups that don't really have that letter recognition even matching, she would say, go find a sticky note, bring it back, and I'll tell you what the letter is. And then the highest group, she did it like, oh, go find W, X, Y, Z. And then they all put them back up and then she said, find the letter that says, and then they had to go find W. So still differentiated, but the same activity. I'm telling you, so easy to differentiate with these ty types of tasks, you know? And then for the writing, we did our fine motor journals and we practiced writing slants in each direction. And then for the computer, the second two days is actually going to be library. So they're gonna just practice looking at books for the theme of the month, you know? So right now it's like August back to school books and they just sat on the rug and looked at books. Wow, that was a lot. Let me show you real quick before I have to go what the letter building toys are. Also, we had to cover our toys with a sheet because we have some friends that are dumping buckets, but we're gonna, you know, gradually open it up when we think they can handle it. So we have these and we actually have a binder that has pictures of how to build the letter so they can make like, there we go. H, wow, that was challenging. That's why we have the book, to let them, it shows them like what they need. And then we also got these fun puppets that they can build letters with too. So we don't have pictures for this one, so it was a little more challenging. But build the letter O, and then you can do the puppets. So, easy, fun, hands-on, that's what they need right now. I gotta go to lunch. I'll be back on here to go through some of the other things very soon, bye. Okay, I have like three minutes. I'm gonna show you guys really quick before I go home the Play-Doh, the Sensory, and the Art Project. And then I'm going home and we'll wrap up the rest of this video tomorrow on Friday. First of all, welcome to the chaos of put everything up high where the kids can't reach it. This is what the Play-Doh is for this week. It's you know all about me and five senses, so super simple. Put some rollers out. 
some cutters, different colors, and then we just laminated these face papers. And so we just talked about how they could give them hair and eyes and a nose and a mouth and earrings and all the cute things. And then when they were done with this, they just played with Play-Doh anyways. We're getting started for our next week. The art project is here. We got an easel now, so we will be using it for, you know, painting and stuff. But for now, we just posted the picture of the art project for this week. And we're doing potato head senses. We found this on Pinterest and just cut the paper freehand. And then we put it in here. This is extra stuff too. Just the little supplies. So we got the ears and the smile, the tongue, the nose the eyes and the arms. And then this is what we have so far for how they look. Pretty cute. Some of them kind of look like mice, but you know. We also got in some carpet spots for lining up. And then we got some stuff from a wonderful parent for our apple orchard that we're gonna be doing in our dramatic play. And then in our sensory bin, the only problem with this sensory bin is it's massive, so it's really hard to fill it. But we have these blue, they're from Lakeshore. They're, they're like plastic blue pieces. Kind of a mess on the rug, but you know. And then we put in pink and blue of the crinkle paper for like boy and girl. And then I brought potato head pieces from my house, which is why this one's written on. And so they just like find the little potato pieces and make a potato head. They're loving it. Okay, so that's it. I'm out of here. I'll be back on tomorrow to wrap up this video. I hope you guys are having a great week. Hello, happy Friday. It's the end of the day. We just had our first, actually it's still going on, rainy day dismissal, so that's, that's fun. We have a dismissal line, like a car line in the front of the school for mostly elementary and any middle school that has siblings that are in elementary. And then in the back of our school, we have a separate car line for our middle schoolers that don't have elementary siblings and pre-K. So that's why our line kind of ends a little faster, so lucky us. Anyways, I'm going to just wrap up a couple of things. Like I said, you know, everything's really digital right now, so I'm trying my best to like save copies of things that we do, but I might not be able to share everything that we do yet until we get some more curriculum in here. So for our math time, before we do our math groups, I'm giving myself like a real split second to do like a mini lesson. Like I'm talking mini, mini, nothing, nothing drastic because, well, let's be real, they don't listen. So <laughs> they're not ready to sit on the rug very long. They'd give more instruction at my table in a smaller group. So for instance, for instance, on Monday, we did the Jack Hartman. I can show the number three in many ways. And then on Tuesday, we showed the number three in many ways on, on a poster. Well, not like a physical poster. We have like a whiteboard on the smart board. So we, they told me five frame, whatever. And we drew the pictures and stuff like that. On Wednesday, this was actually the longest of the mini lessons that we did, but it still wasn't that long. We made our own. I had this like able to print out, but then the copy machine, Wow, we actually have a copy machine now on the second floor of our building and we're supposedly getting one on the first floor too where we are, but nonetheless, there wasn't a copy machine so we just made them ourselves with little daughters. But we've been doing dot talks in the very beginning of our math where it just like shows a visual like this, what do you see? And they'll say circles or red or there's three, how do you know there's three? Or they'll say they're in a diagonal. And so just like exploring the numbers and dot form. So we did this and I gave them all like little counters and I would say find the number three and they had to pick one of the ones that was three and it wasn't like a bingo, it was just like fill the board up and that was that. So it was still short but it was the longest of the days. And then on Thursdays with the number three, we literally stood up and I showed them how to make a group of three with friends. So me, Miss Sam and Miss Whitney, like we're a group of three together. Now you find a group of three. So when they did it the first time it was like a hot mess because probably not that they didn't understand the three but just getting in a group with your friends you know that's kind of tricky at this age so we helped them and then they oh look you guys are in a group of three holding hands great job okay now find a new group of three and they did it way better that time and then i think we did it one or two more times just like putting our bodies into groups of three and like next week we're going to do it with groups of four so on fridays we do not do small group for math or literacy so that means that i have to plan like kind of like a math activity and then like a literacy activity which is going to be our uh, shared writing that we're going to try and do which went well today so i'm going to show you those things for our math activity even though we've only gone through zero one two and three you know i just wanted to see like what they knew for four and five and 
it was kind of split. Like half the class can count to 100, I'm pretty sure. And then the other half, you know, they're learning as we're teaching it. So I just gave them a thing of stickers and they already had this and they had to put one sticker on and then two stickers, three, I showed them with the four. And that was that. Simple activity, stickers, they love it. Then for our shared writing, another cool part is like anchor chart paper. I don't even really have to use because the smart board has this like whiteboard feature and the kids, it's just because it's like on a board, they're just so engaged, it's crazy. So we talked about how we can draw our pictures with a pencil instead of a crayon and then we can color with our crayons. Kind of fast forwarding into my literacy like group time too, but we read a story from our curriculum called what makes, or if you're happy, it's basically if you're happy and you know it, they had to cover their ears if something's loud, stomp their feet, they did use your nose, there was like different versions. So anyways, we did the shared writing activity on what makes you happy. So I modeled, just like I would do in kindergarten, I did a modeling, oh, let me think, uh, this makes me happy and this makes me happy and da, da, da. let me pick one of them and so I picked coffee because at that moment I needed some coffee. <laughs> I really wanted coffee. So I said, coffee makes me happy from Starbucks. And I just drew like a person. I just talked through how I was drawing it, that I have two arms, this hand's gonna hold my cup. I'm gonna make a rectangle for a cup and you know, the whole thing. And then after that, on the bottom, I put a blank and then I put makes me happy, period. And I told him, I said, you know, right now we're learning how to draw and answer questions through our drawings, but pretty soon, once you learn your letters and your sounds, you'll be able to use your letters to make words to tell us what you're thinking, right? So I sounded out coffee for them on the blank and I told them, everyone, all you're doing is drawing a picture. When the teachers come to you, we'll talk you through that sentence because some of the kids, I mean, their drawing is like what I wanna see them just putting crayon to the paper, you know? Um, some of the kids is just like learning how to draw something. Some of the kids can draw really well, but they might not know their letters and sounds, so they're gonna draw a great picture and then I'm gonna write the sentence for them. And then some of my really high ones that I told you I have this year, they're ready to at least write the beginning sound of what makes them happy. And then one of the little girls sounded out the word she missed a few sounds, like had the letters a little mixed up, but still the concept of being able to stretch that word was mind blown. So I got an example. This is one of the students that was able to get a beginning sound and then like one extra sound in the word. But as you can see his picture, he said, he even said, I don't know how to draw a pool. And I said, well, what shape is your pool? And he said, um, it's big. And I said, is it a square or a rectangle? And so he attempted to draw a rectangle and then like this isn't him. Or, can't really see it, but this is him. Then he colored the water blue. And then down here, I put a blank, makes me happy, and he said swimming. And so I wrote swimming really small here, but he put an S and an E, swimming. That's what he got. I was amazed. This is like day one of shared writing for pre-K, and I was like, okay, great job. I don't wanna confuse you guys, that was not every kid. That was like two or three out of the whole group that were able to sound out a word. Don't be worried if yours aren't doing that, you know, that's okay. Wow, I'm like out of breath. Okay, for literacy, that kind of jumped ahead, but for my whole group of literacy this week, city sounds like a PowerPoint and it would make, it was actually terrible, I'm not gonna lie, it's from the district. And it was like, click on this sound and it would be like high heels walking on a sidewalk and then they had to guess what it was, but like there were glitches and like it really wasn't, it wasn't that great. So. I wish I would have done sounds in the classroom like opening a cabinet or a door or something like that. But nonetheless, we got through it. On Tuesday, we talked about same and different. And so we had these picture cards. We didn't actually get to it. I don't know. I don't know what happened. Who knows? We probably were like losing our minds in here and we needed a break so we didn't get to it. But I can get to it another day or in a small group. So it's just like pictures of animals with the word and so I was just gonna have them find a partner that has the same one and then I was gonna have them find a partner that has a different animal just to work on that vocabulary but it didn't happen so maybe next week and then on Wednesday like I said we had picture day so it was really early in the morning but we just skipped over our literacy like whole group and still did our small groups and then that What Makes You Happy book from the district, I did the digital version since we don't have our curriculum. Day one, we talked about vocabulary, so I picked four words for vocabulary and we did a physical action for it. So when we read the story, when they heard that word, they had to do the action. And then on Friday, today, when we read it, we did the shared writing. So that kinda was like day two of reading that. Once we get into like our show and share and stuff, I'm, I'm gonna be manipulating that a little bit because we do show and share on Friday instead of a book. 
but I still wanna have time for that shared writing since we don't have small groups, so I'll figure it out. Now this year, I do have time for some science and social studies. It's not a lot of time, so it's short and sweet type lessons, nothing too crazy. Um, we are, like we introduced five senses this week. So for Monday is like early release so they don't get science or social studies. But Tuesday we did five senses, like a book about all the senses, just like what it means. On two, Wednesday, on Wednesday, we did five senses at the beach and it's just a book on Mayan, which is a distro thing that they have for read alouds that we use. And then we just had discussion about it. It wasn't any like actual hands-on activities. It was just a book talking about it. Then Thursday, Friday, I did social studies, which we talked about how people, like we all look alike and different. And so we talked about, uh, we read a book on Mayan as well, and it talked about skin color and hair color. And so we just talked about our things that we look the same and things that we look different with. And then today, we really had like no time. We read the book and that was it. It was about families, how families are different, that you know, some families might have a stepmom or a stepdad. Some families have grandmas and grandpas that live at home with them, could be adopted, like all those different things, very surface level. And then they, before they packed up, I just had them tell me who lives with them at home, including pets, and then they got to pack up. We got a lot done. Actually, I finally like got my picture schedule like finalized and <laughs> When I was taping them all up, I tried to do magnets because it's on the whiteboard and like take them off like I did last year with the Velcro, but the Velcro wouldn't stick. So I tried magnets and the magnets were not sticking. And then one of our little friends was ripping off the magnets. So I was like, oh, so I finally just like taped them to the whiteboard and I have a magnet and I'm just going to move the magnet. But the funny story is I put them all up and it's a lot. Like there are so many, like everything's real short, but it's just a lot. And he said, wow, that's a really long day. <laughs> and I'm like, I know, I agree. So we're, we're chugging along, we got this. The kids are getting into a great groove and next week's gonna be some more fun. So I will, speaking of that, if you like this video, as always, thank you so much for giving us that thumbs up. If you're not already subscribed, please subscribe for more videos and that notification bell if you'd like to be notified for when I post a video since I can't get my life together and post on the same day every week. I'm still working on that, but life is crazy and I'm doing what I can. So I hope you like them. I hope you have a great weekend or if I post this on Sunday, you already had a great weekend and I will see you next week. Bye.